Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of the Q2 Theory. I'm your host JC. Today we're talking about, of course, how to be the most impactful student on your campus. And I'm specifically gearing this towards college students, but you can actually use these tips that I'll be giving you for high school as well. I'm going to show you something real quick. This, this is the award that I got for being the most impactful student on my campus. This is called the Legacy Award. And it says on the bottom, for leaving a footprint on our campus that will forever be remembered. And so the question that I've gotten when I've talked about this and I've gotten other awards as well from my school and the question that I, questions that I get is how did you do that? How did you become so impactful on your college campus? And while there are a few lessons, a few ways I did it that you can actually use to be impactful no matter where you go in the future. All right, and so we're gonna get straight into this. The first thing you wanna do if you wanna be impactful on campus or even any other area in your life, the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna figure out why. You want to come up with a goal, okay? What is your goal? What is it that you want to achieve? What is it that you want to do that being on campus you want to accomplish? Okay, personally, mine was to get the most benefit and utilize all of the opportunities that I was afforded while being a benefit to those around me. That was literally my goal. My, if I could take advantage of every opportunity, uh, that all the good opportunities, I should say, that came my way and create opportunities for the, my fellow students, that's what I wanted to do and that was my goal. What is your goal that you want to accomplish? Maybe it's you want to get a great internship. Maybe it's you want to be able to, uh, to, to go on a, a particular trip or to do a particular activity Maybe you want to go to your uh, state's capital and then talk to politicians or whatever your goal may be. Realize what that goal is. Then now we get into how to work it and get towards that goal. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to simply evaluate how the power structure, if you will, works at your school. And you generally have, you know, you've got your president, you've got your, uh, your vice president, you've got your deans over the different areas and the different colleges. Then, of course, you've got your, your professors. You've also got student government, your association, your, your, for ours, we call it SGA. Then you've got your student development as well, right? All of these different areas interact in different ways and then you've got your student organizations right these are organizations that are started either by students and solely on the campus or by huge organizations like honor societies or business societies that then start chapters on those organizations and you want to get to know okay which organizations are the ones basically who have impact on campus and you want to sort of understand how these organizations interact with each other and you can basically you can get a feel for that by when you have whenever you go to SGA right maybe you go to student government because you need a, some papers or you're going to the student development office because you need to you know get get some questions answered about your schooling or whatever have you when you do that take the opportunity to speak to the students or speak to the staff who you're interacting with right so you don't just go there and say oh I need this paper once you say I need this paper from our school or whatever then you're like so you know how's your day going <laughs> right you know so how are things you know where are you, are you working here at student development how long have you been working here at student development right you start a, a conversation with them and just by talking just natural conversation conversation you can start learning okay so this is how things work with student development this is how things work with student government this is how things work in this area that area and then you just get an understanding of how the the power dynamic works the reason this helps is because you can understand all right let's say this particular group handles most of the trips right and your goal is to go on to a trip okay then you know and we, we both know what type of trip we're talking about right like vroom vroom not choom, okay so you know and your goal is to go on one of these cool trips then you know okay then i should be active and get involved with this group of people right and so you can understand that so even if in student development covers everything but a particular part of student development covers the trips and things like that that's the one that you want to go into right so you this way it sort of pinpoint focuses where you want to have your impact where you want to really get active in once you've got that so then you've got two things under your belt you've got your goal and then you kind of understand just generally you know not super in depth but just generally the way the power dynamic works and who's who which groups are related to what your goal is about 
And then you want to do the third thing, which is your networking. Now you want to practice this everywhere you go, okay? Basically, any chance you get to talk to somebody, take it. And that's whether you're at school, whether you're at work, whether you're at, at anywhere, the grocery store, shopping. The more you talk to people, the more you're used to talking to people you'll get, all right? And you'll be like, well, what if somebody, I start talking to somebody and they don't want to talk to me, right? Well, it, it, hey, it doesn't matter. Your goal is to network and build your networking skill, right? So even if somebody might not want to talk to you, you just learn how to, how to take that and just improve yourself, right? And many times some people are busy or whatever and don't always take things so, so to heart as far as, you know, they're rejecting me as a person or whatever. Just realize, okay, maybe they couldn't talk right now right maybe the the topic that I was talking about wasn't interesting to them but when you keep doing uh, when you keep initiating conversation you'll start getting better at it and to the point where you'll be able to go up to people and sort of figure out what sort of things they're interested in you'll be able to talk to them about those things and you'll be able to build connections really quickly and really solid connections with people simply because by pra the virtue of practice makes perfect you'll get better at your networking so you'll definitely want to be doing this on campus that means when you're in class you're sitting next to somebody you talk to them uh, a great opportunity if you let's say you see somebody who you really want to talk to in class the way you the way you set it up is when uh, if you get there early okay and let's say uh, he or she is standing outside outside you know waiting to get into class that's the time you start conversation with them then when the class door opens you know the professor comes opens the class door you can just carry the conversation on as you go into the class and then naturally you can sit by this person when class excuse me, when class starts because you've already started a conversation. And what you want to do is as you start conversation with your classmates, when you're in the in the cafeteria, etc., you just start meeting people and you start building connections, right? And so one of the things you also want to do is specifically also focus on the group that is, the group or groups that are related to your goal, okay? So whatever groups that may be, it might be the honor society, it might be the business club, it might be the art club, it might be student government, student development. Tell them, I'm interested in being a part. What do I need to do? to be a part you know is there what are the requirements for joining this group you want to reach out to the to the specific people who you want to have uh, an, an impact with right and who you want to you know connect with in order to accomplish your goals on campus so then that's the next thing that you that's the next thing that you want to do and then after that now's the building phase okay here's where you found out what you want to do you know who's going to who who you need to uh, get to know and who you need to network with that'll help you towards your goal then once you get into the group once you get into the organization once you've done your application all that stuff now it's the building phase here is where you start building your relationship you're, you've already connected now you're building the relationship okay and so you're, you've joined the group now you're showing up for meetings you want to basically just be consistent whatever you're doing you be consistent in it and you just continue to build the relationship with everybody who you are around all right now what's going to happen is this and it happens like almost without fail is as you're and it happens almost without fail is as you build you get into the group you start building your relationships an opportunity always it just it's like very consistently virtually all the time an opportunity will open up for you to have some sort of position within the group right so where the the, uh, the opportunity i'll call this the uh the golden door moment okay the golden door moment will come across where you will have the opportunity to no longer just be a member all right. What I mean, there'll be a, a step up that you can take an opportunity to get for a promotion, if you will. And it'll always come up once they figure out that, OK, this is a good person. This is a consistent person. Then that golden door opportunity will show up. All right. Now, you might get multiple golden doors at once. So you have to choose the one or the ones that are the right for you, that are the right ones for you. But when you get that, you go for it. OK, my golden door opportunity was this. I found out which groups on campus, you know, were related to what I wanted to do as far as the, the honor society was one of them. So I went and I ended up join, applying and joining the, the honor society. And then once I was in the honor society, I was able to just naturally, you know, just by natural means, I'm talking to the officers and uh, one in particular I became acquaintances with. And then he invited me to an officer meeting. And that's where Golden Door Opportunity came in, where they asked if I would like to be the next president of the Honor Society on campus. 
and that was awesome. Okay, we're talking about a, a, a chapter of an international honor society, and I mean, they, they give $80 million in scholarships every year to their members. I mean, it's just, it, just a bunch of really cool stuff, and that was my Golden Door opportunity. Now, when that came, I actually was not expecting it when they when they offered me it. I felt like it was out of the blue, but this was something that they had thought, thought about, and they sort of watched me, got to know me a little bit, to where they're like, okay, yeah, this is somebody who we would like to be the next leader of our group, right? And so when this opportunity came, I uh, I talked to my mom about it, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, and she was like, hey, you should go for it, you know. So I went, I went for it. I got, uh, I actually ran for the position of president, and then I was elected as the position of, as the president of the honor society. And so that was my golden door moment. I stepped through it. When you get the golden door opportunity, you want to step through the door. That's the next step. Then you now you've got to deliver. OK, so that opportunity, the golden door opportunity is the it's the door that opens towards the path that leads to your goal. OK, so basically when you are when you get on campus and you're just uh, the first step, I said, is to know your goal. OK, so that's you know your goal. Second step look at the power structure right that's using the, the building equivalent that's like understanding the floor plan the layout right then you start talking to specific the specific pinpointed groups that's like going and knocking on the door the golden doors now you're knocking on the door okay then you show yourself faithful right that's like you know that's like being consistent you know knock and keep on knocking do whatever's needed to do you sweep the hallway you clean the golden door right you know you're being consistent showing yourself faithful then it opens up okay and now the the goal isn't right there on the other side of the door the goal is down the hallway that's gonna usually require some work okay so like that is the next step is work hard once you get into the door that is the next step that you want to do is you want to get to work right opportunities are just really are really great but they come with work pants on so then once you get this it's just working down that hallway to accomplish whatever the goal is right so here's where you want to have the work plan and, and set for me with with the honor society that I joined the work plan was I created a goal, a plan for how I wanted the, uh, the ch that chapter of the Honor Society to progress during my term. I set real tangible goals for my team, for my members that I wanted all of us to accomplish. And there were some really, they were lofty too. They were really great goals, right? And I had to, you know, encourage and talk to them and, and, and everything as far as the goals. But then we had to work towards those goals, okay? And now while I, I will put an asterisk at this point is that when you're in college and you're looking you're starting this work session right you want to make sure that you keep your grades up during this time okay so you've got to be able to balance the work that is going to that work that naturally comes with being active on campus with the work that naturally comes from being on camp from being a student right which is your grades so you want to be able to make sure that you balance those two out so you don't want to put too so much over here so that you start losing on your grades you don't want to do that you want to keep up your grades and then have just enough so that you can get to your goals over here but not so much that it starts doing this and then you know and your grades start going down never want to do that so you have a balance and then you work towards that goal. And now here's the key, right? Here's the key. And this is what's really so, there, there are a portion of students who get this. They get to the door, they get down the hallway, they work down the hallway, they get their goals, they're good, right? But they're not the ones who get the, they're not the ones who get the awards, okay? For being the best student on campus. The ones who get the awards are the ones who are working in the hallway they get, they've gone through the golden door, they're working towards their goals, but they'll open the door for others, right? And they're bringing others in. And as they find other doors, other golden doors, they're opening golden doors for other people. They're opening silver doors for other people. And they, they're opening bronze doors for other people. They are helping others to come up, right? For example, as I was president of the Honor Society on campus, I was creating opportunities for other groups. Other groups were starting and I was helping them start. I was uh, giving advice to, to other presidents of different groups and organizations on campus. I was showing up to other meetings to help them and support them in what they were doing. I was being a conduit for opportunity and a conduit for success and help for, and, and not just myself, but my whole officer team 
as part of the goal that was set, we were helping other groups on campus. And so that created, a, a, a put us in a position where we were a nucleus. We were a necessary functioning part of the campus. And that's what you want to become. See, when you work for yourself, then uh, if you're gone, there's not really an impact. There will be plenty of other people who want to do and can do what you do when you're gone, as far as working for yourself. But when you're working and you're having a positive impact on other people, there's only one person who can positively impact people in the, in the same way that you can, and that's you. Nobody can have the exact same impact on others that you can because you come at it with your own unique style, your own unique personality, your own unique taste, and nobody can replicate that. That's something that is a gift that you have. So when you start impacting other people in a positive way, that's the thing that's gonna be remembered. That's the thing that cannot be replaced. Even when other great people come across, they'll still remember, man, you know, that person, I still remember that person because they impacted my life, right? And so that's, that's the difference between the person who just works down the hallway and the person who brings others with them. And that's what you want to do. So that's the next step to remember is bring others with them. As you see doors and you're and you it's in your power, open those doors for other people as well, right? And then you work and you get to that goal. And then that's the that's the part where you have fun, right? You celebrate yourself when you get to the goal. You celebrate all the people who who work with you to get to that goal. And then it's just the the being the being humble part, right? You want to make sure that you're uh, very thankful. Like I held entire events just to thank my officers for all of the work that they did, for all of the time, the effort that they put in, you know. And I I like took time at our events to thank them, you know. And then uh, after at the end of our term, I even wrote them like like little letters, basically, to just let them know, thank you. You know, I, and I specifically named stuff. I named, you know, when they helped with this event, when they did that, when they went above and beyond on this, you know, and I just named, named, named specific things to each specific officer that I was thankful for that they had did, that had helped get to the goal, that had helped us accomplish everything that we accomplished, right? And so that's the, that's the next thing. And I mean, I was on stage after stage after stage. I got, you know, awards, accolades, thank yous and stuff like that. And the first thing that you do is you thank those people who helped you get there right and then uh, I, another thing that I did is I went out and I purchased and cre I actually created an award which is now an official award inside of the organization to award officers for and members for their interactions and being a positive impact within the honor society. Even more than that, I also had and gave awards for faculty and staff members who were helpful in the process as well. So even you know full grown adults, right, who were uh, <laughs> who were helpful and everything like that. I was uh, giving awards to them and they appreciated it, right? So that's the next thing that you want to remember is you want to be thankful to all those people who helped you get there. Said and actually I'll touch on the faculty and, and staff for a moment. So you want to also definitely make sure you're building those connections with your faculty and staff. Make sure that you're very, uh, make sure that when in to, to your, the best of your ability, you're creating connections with your professors, right? Not, uh, you know, you don't want to do like that, right? But to the best of your ability, you want to create connections with your professors. Now I know on my school, they uh, it was actually required that deans had a certain amount of classes that they taught in a, in a, in a year, in a given school year, just so that they stayed remembering um, that these are, you know, the, the students and they had that face-to-face -face connection and it just really helped them do their job better because, you know, when you're a dean, if you're not dealing with students on a class level, then students become numbers and papers. But when you're actually teaching, you have the numbers and papers that you're doing as a dean, you know, but at the same time, you have that face-to-face -face interaction and it it just helps you see past the numbers and pa papers you're seeing faces when they're looking at the work that they have to do right and that's a really awesome thing that my my, my college did 
but you never know who you're meeting as far as the the professors are concerned you never know who you're meeting as far as the staff is concerned one of the things i would do is i'm just walking on campus if i saw a janitor cleaning the grounds i would say hi and talk to the janitor like they knew me by name and i knew them by name and every time i saw them i would just say hey you know and i would talk to them and you know every now and then uh, i i would offer to, to just help them out if they need any help with what they were doing i'm not saying that you specifically have to help the janitors on your on your grounds but what i I am saying is that you need to realize and build a connection and a relationship with everybody period not just the people who you think are going to help you get somewhere but period it just needs to become who you are to network to make friends to build relationships with people and to have a positive impact it can't be i'm just going to positively impact this person who i think can then return and positively impact me no it's got to be a positive impact just car blunt everybody that just has to be your mode of operation, your method of operation, and when your modus operandi, right? So when that happens, you're going to, people will take notice of that. Even though when, when it becomes part of who you are, you don't really realize all the time when you're having a positive impact, but then people will come to you and thank you for things, and, and you realize how big of an impact you had when they thank you for what you did and explain just how much, of, how much it impacted them, how much it meant to them. Right. So then that would be the, the last note to take away is make sure that you are having that positive impact on everybody. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to check back on Wednesdays or every for new episodes. Let me know in the comments about any cool impacts or that you've had on your college campus. Any questions you have on specific things and nuances. I can definitely answer those. Oh, and of course, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Right, if you like the video, if it helped you, share it so that it can help other people. That's actually a part of, of, of having a positive impact. You can actually have a positive impact by doing that, right? By, if this was content that actually helped you, then you can share it, and then there'll be somebody else who can be helped. So everybody have a great day, and peace.